<clears throat> Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for this July 4th, Independence Day. We will begin in just a few seconds. Um, and when we do, we will begin in the prayer book on page 115. Let me get situated here. Okay. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Evening prayer continues with the invitatory and the psalm. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And now, O oh, gracious light, on 118. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O oh, Son of God, O oh, giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this day is a portion of Psalm 107, a big portion of Psalm 107, verses 1 through 32. <clears throat> Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes. They found no way to a city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished with them. <coughs> Excuse me. So sorry. Their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deep gloom, bound fast in misery and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he humbled their spirits with hard labor. They stumbled, and there was none there to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them out of darkness and deep gloom and broke their bonds asunder. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. For he shatters the doors of bronze and breaks into the iron bars. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. 
Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships and plied their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Sorry. Then they were glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading this evening is from Micah. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. People shall stream to it and many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk, each in the name of his God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first response this evening will be the first song of Isaiah. Uh, it is found in the prayer book on page 86. The first song of Isaiah on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is possibly my favorite reading in all of Scripture. It is from Revelation 21, 1 through 7. <clears throat> then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, 
we will respond with, <laughs> sorry, the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. That is the end of our readings, I think, for this evening. Uh, I would like to to point out the Revelation reading, and if you're in my church, you've heard me talk about this a great deal, that um, Revelation is a book that I find uh, very frightening in most of its aspects, but this piece from Revelation 21 is, um, is marvelously comforting to me. And so I read it as saying, if the, if the so-called uh, end times come, I, I don't even know, I'm not very well um, informed about all of the theories of the rapture and so on, but if, if end times come where there is an ending to this life on earth, I want to emphasize this first part of Revelation 21. I saw the whole holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Jerusalem and God come down out of heaven. We are not raptured away from earth to heaven. God comes here and it all becomes the new Jerusalem, not our leaving some people and things behind and going to another place to be with God. God chooses to come here. I per personally believe that God chooses that now and not only in an end times. So I find great comfort in this reading that God comes here to be with us and it is I guess a matter of debate when that happens, but to me it happens every time I invite it. Amen. We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me, I still have a, a little touch of my Scottish cold left over. We continue with the prayers. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will move forward with suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, 
Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. I'd like to remember a few people, particularly in my prayers this evening. I'd like to pray for Karen, for Cindy, for Dinah, for Mia, for Debbie, for John, for Miller, and for Donna. And I pray for our nation. Um, because of our freedoms, in a sense, we, are, uh, we have a lot of turmoil. Um, if we didn't have the freedoms, we wouldn't be allowed to have the turmoil. But that brings small comfort sometimes when people are being hurt. So I pray for our nation, that our, each of our citizens will find peace within so that we can begin to um, give off that peace to the people around us in our nation. We'll continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you for joining me on this 4th of July. I hope that you have had a very good day celebrating our nation, a safe day. Um, and I, um, I hope that you will join me again tomorrow night for evening prayer. Thanks. <laughs>